All my buttons are buttoned, I think I'm ready to do this. Long exposures are my favorite type of photo in the entire world. They're a super easy way to capture movement and take a really impressive looking photo. So today I'm gonna walk you through how to do it. If you don't know what a long exposure is, first, here are some example shots I've taken, and second, allow me to explain. A long exposure is when you open up the camera shutter for a long period of time. It could be one second, it could be 10 hours, but basically you let in more light, and as a result, all the moving objects in the photo blur out, while all the stationary objects stay sharp. To start, you're gonna need two things. One, a DSLR with manual settings, and two, a sturdy tripod. If you don't have a tripod, you can actually get away with using a phone, a wallet, or a shoe to stabilize the camera, but let me tell you, it's a lot easier with a tripod. So if you don't have one, I'll actually put a link down below to the tripod I'm using. It's a great tripod. We're gonna start with something super simple, cars, which emit a nice, long, beautiful light trail. For best results, wait until it's dark outside because the car's headlights will pop out way more. So once it's dark, go to a location where cars pass pretty frequently because the process requires a bit of trial and error and it sucks having to wait 20 minutes for another car to pass. Now that you're on location, it's time to start shooting. Set up your tripod and follow these steps. Step one, composition. Turn on your camera and start thinking about how you want to frame the shot and where you want the cars to enter and exit frame. If you want them to be in frame for a short period of time, maybe be perpendicular so they're passing you like this. If you want them to be in the frame for a longer period of time, maybe be facing the cars in the same direction so you see where they enter and they're in frame all the way until they're out of sight. Another good way to do this is if there's a median in the middle of the street, stand in the median and then you can see them coming and then going for way, way, way long. For this, you really just have to be creative and play around until you find something that works. Don't be afraid to try something weird because weird can make for really great photos. Step two, timer mode. When you take a photo and press the shutter button, it actually shakes the camera a little bit. Now this isn't an issue, for a regular photo because it takes it fast enough, but for long exposures, you'll actually be able to see that shaking and it won't look as good. So what we're gonna do is turn on a two or three second timer, whatever your camera allows, maybe it's 10 seconds, maybe it's five, just so you can press the shutter button, get your hands out of the shot and have a steady photo. If you don't know how to turn on your camera's timer, I wish I could go over that, but I can't because all cameras are different. So just Google your camera's name and then turn on timer and I'm sure you'll find something. Step three, camera mode. If you're new to photography and don't know your camera too well, I recommend trying shutter priority mode or TV on a Canon. And this is basically where you change the shutter speed or how long it takes to take the photo and it does everything else for you. If you're a little bit more comfortable with your camera, I recommend manning up and going to full manual mode, which is how I do it. Basically, you control all the camera settings and don't worry, I'll walk you through it. You also get more props as a photographer for doing it all yourself. So step four, set your shutter speed. Another word for this is exposure. So if you hear exposure, don't worry, it's the exact same thing. Now, when you're setting your shutter speed, think about how long it's gonna take for your subject to pass through the photo and adjust accordingly. Since we're shooting cars, I'm gonna set mine around five seconds, which will allow for a number of cars to pass through and make for a really nice looking shot. For the next two steps, those of you shooting in shutter priority mode, you can ignore me. But if you're shooting in full manual, listen up. Step five, set your ISO. ISO is how sensitive your camera is to light. So the higher the ISO number, the brighter and grainier your shot's gonna be. So for long exposures, we're gonna minimize graininess and set our ISO at 100. Step six, set your aperture. Now all lenses have a little hole in it that lets in light called the aperture ring. The smaller your aperture number, say f3.5, the more light you're letting in and the bigger the hole you have, which makes the photo brighter. The bigger the aperture number, the smaller the ring is, say f22, which lets in less light and makes for a darker photo. Something else aperture affects is the depth of field. So really small aperture numbers like f3.5 make for a really shallow depth of field, which is when one thing is in focus and everything else in different planes is blurry, whereas f22, everything is gonna be a little bit more in focus. That's really just a stylistic decision you have to make. Shallow depth of field can look awesome for stuff like portraits or long exposure, but also maybe you wanna have everything in focus, so it's really up to you. ISO, shutter speed, and aperture all affect the amount of light your camera lets in, so you have to counterbalance them for the perfect photo. So what I like to do is work my way backwards and decide what's most important. I think most important thing in this photo is shutter speed. So we're gonna set that first at five seconds. And then next is the ISO, because we don't want a grainy shot. So we're gonna set that at 100. And then lastly, aperture. So for this, aperture comes last because we really care about shutter speed and ISO. So we're gonna actually tweak the aperture around the other two, keeping the other two consistent until we have a perfectly lit shot. So it might be 7.1, it might be F11. Just play with that until you get a perfectly lit shot. But for some shots, aperture might come first, like if you want a really shallow depth of field for a portrait. So it really just depends on what you're shooting. Step seven, focus the shot. Think about what's the most important part of the 
photo and focus on that. Maybe it's the car, maybe it's the signs. Step eight, then you're gonna go back to manual focus. So when you press the shutter button, it doesn't try and focus again and screw up the whole shot. Step nine, press the shutter button to take the photo and immediately remove your hand so you don't shake the camera. Step 10, once you have all of these settings figured out in a decent looking photo, try experimenting. Try moving the camera somewhere else. Try doing a longer 30 second long exposure. Maybe even try zooming in while taking the long exposure, which makes for a really, really cool effect. Once you have a great shot lined up with perfect lighting, perfect composition, perfect everything, you're gonna wanna take that photo four or five times in the exact same position. And this is because the cars are always changing. So sometimes you might have one tiny little car pass through, and sometimes you might have 10 ginormous monster trucks pass through, which make for totally different light trails. And you'll find that you'll get drastically different photos every time. Here are a few of my favorite photos from shooting in Chinatown, New York that night. And that's that. And now I wanna see your favorite photos. So if you like this tutorial and went out and got something awesome, post it on Instagram, tag me at Josh Katz, and use the hashtag Josh Katz Photos so I can see your awesome work because if you got something that you're super stoked on, it's gonna make me so, so happy. Last and final step, leave a comment down below letting me know what you liked about this tutorial and what could have been improved. I've never actually done a photo tutorial before so I could really use your advice. And let me know what my next photo tutorial should be. Maybe you wanna know how I edit my photos in Lightroom. Maybe you wanna know how I take my 360 panoramas. Just let me know. If you wanna see more of my photos, you can follow me on Instagram, at Josh Katz, or check out my photo portfolio. There's gonna be a link right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you eventually.